Um, very smelly. I mean, all the yarns are smelly. <laughs> well, the dye for is smelly too. I just love a smelly yarn, that's all. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Today is episode 84. We will be talking about July's dye project. I'm also going to show you June's dye project, which is a finished item. And um, there's been a very big change to dye project because if you'll remember, uh, we were going, I was going to do, um, I'm sorry, it's out of my I was going to do a Stephen West rain or shine, rain and shine, rain or shine shawl that is five skeins of mohair. And then I decided not to do that. And last time we spoke, I said I was going to dye some superwash BFL black and do uh, my shawl pattern Linda. And that's not what I ended up doing. I changed my mind. So I've changed everything. So everything is different right now. So there's actually a whole lot to, to get into. So I think we should just go down to it. Um, I am wearing my worsted knit top, which as I've said, you can follow girly knits bra top, uh, as the same pattern uh, that one is just bottom up and I made this one top down um, this the yarn I used is cascade 220 in the colorway mint let's start with well one whip is actually dye project so I can't show that to you yet and the other whip that we were supposed to have is um, the lunch at Tiffany's blouse from and Catherine Bush, which I'm having problems with and I haven't even started yet. So I can't get gauge on that thing. But here's what happened. So I'm the gauge is actually in the pattern, the gauge is in a two by two ribbing, which I didn't do. So I made this swatch out of the cotton I wanted to use, but I made this a while ago, probably a year ago, maybe. I don't remember. You know what? Maybe it's in an old episode where I talk about what my, what needle I used. Cause I did not write down what needle I used, but you know what I got? 24 inches to four inches, which is the exact gauge of the lunch of Tiffany. So I have to figure out which needle you, I used to make this, so I'm re-swatching, and then I have to use that needle and do a 2x2 two two ribbing swatch and see if that matches 24 stitches, because I measured um, my finished, I, I have a finished object for you, and this is the cropped version of the DK knit top. Um, and I measured this because this used 3.25 needles and I got 16 stitches for four inches here. Um, so 16 is quite a bit from 24. <laughs> I don't know how I got to, I don't know what I used on to get that 24. So I'm still, I mean, if I, I think if I can get it on this, I'm just going to do it because it's close enough, right? I don't know. I'm still going to try to swatch, but why did I not write that down? Like, why did I not write that down? I don't know why I didn't write it down. It's ridiculous. Why didn't I write it down? I don't know. So that's not even a whip yet because I haven't even cast on, but I did read through the pattern. I don't know how it's constructed at all. It makes it, I don't understand how it's constructed. It's got... I think like 30 more stitches than I need given this number. So that's worrisome. So I'm not sure I'm actually going to make that pattern. What I think is I already bought it. So I got um, 
I was looking and there is another pattern called the unpattern top down something. I'll tell you in a minute. So I saw uh, this picture. Let me get to the picture that I saw. Um, there's two pictures. So that's the back. So here's the neck and the back comes around like this and then the top is this and it's all in rib but which you can't see. But this is what I want. This is the construction I want and I'm not I'm wondering if her construction is like this and that's why it doesn't make any sense to me. But regardless, hers is the absolute wrong um, gauge. So this is unpatterned top down sleeveless pullover by A. Karen Afka. I don't know how to pronounce that. Afka, A L F K E, it looks like, unless I can't, I mean, I'm not seeing her name again. Akabini Unpatterns. Um, this is $10. It is, um, it's an unpattern. So you choose any yarn you like, swatch it up in the stitch pattern of your choice in a gauge you like. So then it's like a template. Then she tells you how, which is how my brain works anyway. So I'm thinking of doing this instead and then getting to the other pattern where you, cause I know what to do for the waist. So I need to the crossover wrap top part. Um, so I was thinking of figuring that out in the actual lunch at Tiffany's pattern but making it in the gauge I want, the gauge I get <laughs> with 3.5 needles, um, which is not this part. This is a 3.25 needle I use on the short ones ribbing, but I use a 3.5 for this. In the long ones, the full, in the full length version, I use the same needle all the way through. But um, in the short, in the short versions, I go down a needle. Um, for the ribbing. But remember when you bind off, you have to go up to your regular size needle plus one size. So I have to go up or the bind off is too tight. Um, so this, let's talk about this. Are we done with the lunch at Tiffany's debacle? Okay. So I actually did contact the designer and she was very nice, but she was unable to help because of how the pattern's written. You can't, uh, you can't fudge it. You can't fudge it. And she wasn't able to really explain to me how it was, how it was, um, she wasn't able to easily explain to me how it was constructed. I don't know how it's, I don't understand. And looking at that one, I don't understand how that was. The picture, I don't understand how that's constructed either. But if I could do it my own gauge, then it doesn't matter. I can just follow the thing and, you know, trust my gauge will get me through. Um, so this was, um, cropped DK knit top in our knit crate Vitalana Lofty DK. The colorway is Hydrangea. So I actually used more than 50 grams, which hopefully shouldn't be a problem because when I did the top, the full version tops, I didn't use the whole 50 grams. I didn't use the whole 150 grams. I had leftovers and it was, they were really long. So I'm hoping this runs the same because it feels the same, so it should still be, the base should still be the same. If it's, they're marketing it as the same base, calling it the same base, then they have to be the same, right? So all of my other three that I made, four that I made, all had leftovers. And all of the tops had 30 rounds. So I just did 30 rounds on the ribbing. And it fits just like the other one. So I'm hoping the other one, because now I'm a little worried, because this took 55.21 grams. Um, so I'm going to be a little short for the other one, but given that I had extra left over, it should be okay. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I was going to do all of the, all of the crops first and then do the full length. So I think before I do the other ones, I'm going to do this in full length and make sure we still can make a full length one before we, we do it. Okay. So those are no, I have one more. 
Summer Lace Top by Martina Stupova. You've seen this like a million times. I a actually did redo it um, because the pattern is wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm not giving away any secrets here. The pattern, the, the lace, the eyelet part of this is a... I actually did less stitches. So this is because I'm such a perfectionist. If you're going through this, okay, a corner, and these need to mirror themselves, okay, because you've got holes at each end, right? There's a hole at each end, and then there's a stitch. This means you're going to have an odd number of stitches because in order to have a hole, you have to have one stitch in between to make a hole, okay? So here's two holes. There's one stitch in between. So to make those two holes, you have to have one. So the way it was written is you started with a hole, but then you ended with a stitch because she has it written with uh, e an even number. So if there's an even number, you end with a stitch, which means your stitch is bumped up next to your corner, which is two stitches and then a hole. So I went through again and dropped uh, one from each one stitch from each section. So it would be an odd number so we could get the pretty pattern right. So it's the two for the two stitches for the corner, regular granny square corner, and one and a hole right after before the next stitch. So in order to get that hole there, you need to have um, an odd number. So I just redid the pattern to be an odd number and I restarted. And as I was counting, okay, because I made the picture in the pattern bigger and I could count her rows in between the eyelet rows and sometimes there were four, sometimes there were five <laughs> rows in between the eyelet. And the pattern, I think, has it written as there's three. So I was like, this, this thing's all messed up. So I have, I'm keeping track of what I'm, what I think I'm going to do four rows and then an eyelet row, four rows, eyelet row, and just do it that way. And then I hope it works out because the only, the, the really important thing about that is the length, but as long as it's not an eyelet row, I don't think it matters where you end it. You know what I mean? It should be fine. I'll just fudge it when I get to the bottom. Okay. So those are whips. I ordered from was Nomad um, and this is actually what we did dye project on so I'm gonna kind of segue into dye project so I got one bag of marshmallow worsted oh it's 100% superwash merino wool 100 grams 218 yards it's a four ply I got this amazing cute bag nomad look and then it says nomad.com the the k is there it's just hit by the full thing isn't that cute though oh my god it's so cute i love free stuff you know me i love free, i love a free bag it drives me crazy okay so marshmallow this is a bag of 10 i don't remember what it cost me 80 90 something probably $90, $80. They had free shipping uh, last month. So I hadn't even planned on buying from them, but then I got the idea to do this month's dye project. And I was like, I need bare worsted, which of course I didn't have any bare worsted in my stash of all, I've got everything, but no worsted. Um, and Frost Yarns has been doing some dye stuff with Nomad Yarns, and I've had some interaction with Nomad on um, Instagram, and they were very nice. So I was like, I really want to try the yarn. It is so smelly. I love smelly. I love smelly wool. The smellier, the better. Like if you're, I want to feel like I'm in that barnyard. It's so good. It is so good. Um, it is very not soft when you first get it. 
like a lot of bear wools, it's not soft because it's been processed on, you know, the machines and everything. But I have to say that dyed up, it's pretty soft. It's really, really soft. So here it is, uh, undyed. And here is our dye project. Uh, um, one, a two. So isn't that neat how we got that creaminess to here? So first what I did is I used my catering pan, as I always tell you. Yes, I did this in the catering pan. So first I took all, I did four skeins, four skeins, and I put them in lengthwise with each other. And I filled up with the yarn in it, I filled up till almost the top because uh, I wanted a f I wanted to do a nice gray base all over and I wanted it somewhat tonal, but I also wanted full coverage to get this creaminess out because I didn't want this warm. It's it's naturally warm. Bear wool does not come white. It comes in this creamy color. I've never seen white wool. I've never seen white wool. I don't know if it exists. Maybe it does. I don't know. I've only seen creamy undyed wool. Different very variances, varying degrees of creaminess. But I mean, this is pretty creamy. This is a, a creamier. Oh my God. It smells like I, I wish someone would bottle this smell. I would have my whole home smelling. This smell just makes me feel good. <laughs> it puts me in a good mood. Okay, so in order to get from here to here, which is not a very dark gray at all. It's not very dark. Um, so because I had four skeins, I did point one gram point one zero point one gram of pro chems wash fast black acid dye point zero point one gram zero point one gram and so i i put the yarn up in in it spread out four skeins spread out lengthwise lengthwise in the pan filled it up almost to the top, pulled the skeins out, all four skeins, pulled them out, put my dye in, use a whisk to incorporate all the, now when you're doing something like gray or any other light color, pastels, anything like that, it's going to strike faster than if I did a bunch of black because it's heavily pigmented. It takes the yarn. It has more time. I don't know why this is, but because I'm using the exact same dye when I make this gray as I do when I make black. Okay. Same dye, but the amount of dye is different. So even if I mix it really, really well in a lot of water, it, the grays always come out tonal. I think some parts of it just strike faster. And then if you have more uh, dye to um, layer upon that, then you get a fuller coverage. But because there's not a lot of dye, this always is tonal for me. Every time, every time I've done gray is tonal. I just can't do one that's not tonal, which is fine because I like tonal. I like the, the look of tonal. I think if you, if you don't like the look of tonal, the only way to get away from that is to dye first, spin next. <laughs> so that's how the machines get the, like this stuff all more matchy, less tonal. So if you're just doing hand dyed, you're going to get tonal. It's just unavoidable. It's really unavoidable. So I did the 0 0.1 gram, put it in the water, whisked it around, and then I put my four things back in. At the same time, I put them in first, in the bottom first, and then you know, lay them out, push them under. Um, then use your fingertips kind of like this and you move it in the pan. 
well not really this because it was underwater so I used my tongs <laughs> to kind of do that uh, to make sure they were equally in the water equally underwater um, and for that you'll need some sort of slotted spoon I have a spatula that has holes in it so I can push the yarn under and the holes in it allow the air bubbles to escape through my thing so I can hold the yarn under easier um, so after I had done the 0 0.1 gram, I realized there were still spots that were still, they were gray, but they were still warm. You could still see the warm from the creamy. So I mixed up 0 0.05 grams, 0 0.05 grams of black again. I did the same thing, took my yarn out, put the dye in, whisked it up, and when it was fully incorporated, like you want to spread it out, because you'll see it forms like a cloud, so you want to make sure it's fully, you know, dissolved into everything, and it's kind of evenly distributed in the water, and then I put the four skeins back in exactly like I did the first time. So that exhausted rather quickly, it did, and I took them out, and the creaminess was gone and I couldn't tell if they were tonal or not and they they did can't come out tonal uh, but the creaminess was gone so that was good so what I did then is I took out most of the water I kept some in reserve I kept about four cups of it just in case and I just dumped the rest because I didn't need it and it was exhausted um, and then I put the four I took out as much water as I could, so there was still some left in it, which is fine because you don't want the yarn to burn. I n didn't turn the heat off because it takes an hour to heat up. So um, I put the four skeins back in like this, in the pan like this, okay? But the pan is short, so they scrunch up a little. So they'll scrunch up like this, you know, they scrunch up like this. Um, took out all the water I could so it was mostly I just had these so what I did then and go to my Instagram to see all the pictures of what I'm going to explain to you I pushed up all four skeins I kind of pinched like pinch of how you we kind of pinch the yarn when we're doing low immersion we pinch it well we, we have gloves on <laughs> we have gloves on so heat gloves um, I don't, but it wasn't hot at this point. I mean, it was hot, but not, uh, I just used regular dishwashing, dishwashing gloves. Um, but there was no water, so it wasn't, I wasn't like putting my hands in really hot water. You kind of pinch it and move it up and you pinch it and you move it up. And that's kind of how you arrange the yarn. So if you back it up against the wall of your pan, you do like an accordion folding. Do you see how I'm doing this? You kind of fold it like this, like an accordion. So I just kept doing that, just pinching it and pushing it up, pinching it, pushing it up, until all four skeins were pinched up like that against the thing. And you'll see pictures. So once I had it all, all four pinched up, I took the same black dye I mixed it with some citric acid. I don't know how much I did whatever Rebecca does. Um, actually, specifically for her, the, her episode for the spice, because it was in my spice shaker. I'll see if I can find that video for you. I'll link it, for, I'll link it below. I'm going to do link Rebecca's spice what did I say? Spice? Spice jar thing? Okay. Then, because I want to remind you, I am a heavy speckler. I cannot speckle unless it's heavily speckled. And I would like to show you exhibit A of what I mean. <laughs> Do you see these? <laughs> this is September's dye project. This is still not named because I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. 
and I I don't name them until I know what I'm going to do with them. So you see all this heavy speckle. <laughs> I can't speckle any other way about this. So my idea for this dye project, I needed a very light speckling. I wanted it sparse. I wanted it to not do any type of pooling. I wanted it to not detract from the gray. I wanted it to kind of just break up the monotony of gray because I didn't want to just do gray. I did not. I knew, I knew I wouldn't get enough of a tone, enough of a tonality, enough of a Not enough difference between the grays. Do you know what I mean? Because I was thinking of my top like this that's gray that I really, really like. But it's gray and then the rest of it is kind of not dyed. It's kind of still creamy. And that's not what I wanted with this gray. I did not want that creaminess. So I was like, I don't think we're going to get a lot of tonal tonality. Tonalness? Tone. Tone. Whatever. I wasn't going to get a bunch of tonality with it so I decided I wanted to speckle but I this is how I do this is how I do so what I since this is how I speckle I thought how can I use that but make it less speckles and I came up with that accordion folding because then it would only be heavily speckled on the tops of the folds right the rest of that yarn isn't going to get touched if you do it correctly it doesn't get touched the only thing you have to worry about is that there is an edge to your, where your yarn ends. There's water. There is water because you have to, I kept enough of that, res, I have that reserve water, remember? So I kept the water. I kept four cups over when I refilled and I refilled to just before floating, which is if you're new to yarn, that's going to be, but it was just before floating just before it started to float so that would give me enough water to make steam but not enough to make the yarn move and that's exactly what I wanted so I had the yarn all accordion folded so why have you speckled on the top of it but you have to be careful because there's like a cliff of yarn where your yarn ends you don't want any dye because then you got half the pan that is just water and if you get dye in that you know what's gonna happen it's going right to that yarn and it's gonna strike because there's a bunch of acid there because there's acid in my dye that's in my hand and there's acid in that water there's acid in that yarn there's, there's acid everywhere which is what you want for quick strike so I forgot what I was saying <laughs> um, so I just speckled the crap out of the top like I just went to town I went to town like this speckle town and what I got then after then I let it I speckled the top I didn't get real close to the edge where the the last fold you know where the water was I didn't even bother with that because I I knew I wanted the speckles to kind of be sparse so I didn't even worry about it I put the lid on which is what you need to make the steam you need the lid <laughs> So I let it steam for like 30, 30 minutes, went back, I tested, just take a, like a paper towel and press on some of your speckles very lightly. You don't want to like, but if, if it, your hand should come up dry, your paper towel should come up with just wet. It shouldn't have any color in it. Uh, so then what I did is I pulled down, I unaccordion folded them, flipped them, put them back down and then accordion to the other side. So this back side now has no speckles. The speckles were all on the front side. I accordion folded again and just repeated the process. So the back and the front were sparsely speckled. And this is the result of that. I uh, think it's great. I think this would work perfectly for Nomad is actually having a thing for July uh, a challenge that is fireworks or something like that go look at their Instagram because they're having and I'm just saying this technique would be perfect for that to make little fireworks in your yarn and do different colors it would be perfect so go do that and win, win one of their I think it's $50 worth of yarn maybe um, 
So I wanted to show, and you also got, I don't like speckling on worsted either. I don't like, this is DK. It's, I like speckling on fingering. I really, really do. It's, it's just better. It's harder, I think, to speckle on the thicker yarns. So this is how, I want to show you how it came out because it really, it really just, it just came out perfect. This is probably how I'm going to speckle from now on is the accordion fold. And if we flip it around, it's just so, so you don't have to speckle um, heavily on the top. You can speckle however you want. I just can't not heavily speckle. It's just not, it's not possible. I can't not do it. I've tried and it just doesn't work. I go, this is not enough speckles. And then like, I feel like it's uneven and all this. So with the accordion, it, it gave me, I think it gave me a smaller area to focus on. And that made it way easier to concentrate what I wanted to do. And that's, I think if you changed colors, that would be really cool too. Um, Okay, so that was four skeins, 0 0.1 grams, then 0 0.05 grams. Now, I'm, I did a two process that way, and I don't know if I did a 0 0.15 gram, which is what it works out to. If I did just one process, I still worry I would have those warm spots. So I might even have cut that more in half to be more half and half, unless you wanted a bigger tonal. Well, let's look at the yarn. Now, what I decided to make, okay, this is why I changed projects because not that I didn't want to make a Linda. I love Linda. I love Linda. She's my favorite. I want her in black in every base like in every fiber mix that I could possibly get my hands on. Linda is my favorite shawl. Don't tell Eleanor. Eleanor is also my favorite shawl because she doesn't have any purling. Linda has purling, but she's, I don't know. Okay, so the reason I switched from Linda was because I actually do want a black Linda, and the BFL is fine. Um, But I had this strike of, what do you call it? Oh my goodness. What do you call it? When you get an idea, when you get something that you want to do, inspiration. So I had this inspiration. And that inspiration said, you love these tops so much. Why don't you make one into a dress? And I went, that's a great idea. Why don't I do that? So I did. With some modifications, obviously, because I'm not going to um, do the ribbing all the way down. You know the tops look like. Ribbing all the way down. I decided not to do that. I decided to go stocking it all the way. Now what I did on the back part here is that in order to place can see how much this blocks out <laughs> from where it starts to where it ends, right? Um, this is how I know where to put my straps is in between, you know, one in between uh, these. And also, I did not want this rolling down on the back of me. So I did four rows of ribbing at the top. Now, I'm not going to go over this pattern with you right now because one, I'm still developing it and I, I don't know what I'm going to change and where, where I'm going to change it. I'm just trying to get to where, um, I actually have a, my yellow one of these and I have it marked with stitch markers of how many, I think I'm at 50. So I did the top as normal. So this top matches to where uh, the the ribbing would start and then I just omitted the ribbing for now so I'm keeping track so here's the first row that would be ribbing 
and here's 25 50 so I'm j I just went over 50 I think I got to get to like 75 before we're gonna do something with the skirt now the f I had two different skirt ideas um, I don't know how to do the second idea that I have which I actually found a picture while I was scrolling through Facebook of some type of workout gear um, but if you can see this you can't see that because it's black um, it's kind of a flouncy skirt can you see it's not ribbed there's like darts I don't know so there's a bunch of like in it's not really ruffles either it's kind of like a like a tennis dress kind of um, I'm not entirely sure how to make that that's really what I want to, it to look like but instead because I only dyed up four skeins. I don't know how much this is going to take take for me. Because two, one and a half gets me to my hip bone. So 150 grams gives me hip bone. And then the rest of it has to cover my butt. So I'm thinking of first doing a relaxed fit and then doing um, coming down over uh, my backside and then doing a split hem with um, ribbing, not ribbing, garter, garter, because it'll be a split hem going back and forth, garter for the split hem. So the split hem would kind of look like a gauge swatch. So like it's gonna have this garter part where the two ends are right if, at the side so they'll unattach here at the top and then we'll have garter to keep them from rolling in and then we'll end with some garter at the bottom now you would think hey why didn't you do that up here at th exactly why didn't I I don't know I, I, I didn't think that far ahead. Um, this is the first one. This is the first one. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, that's my plan, is to make it relaxed fit, um, cover the backside, split hem, I, d I don't want like a body contrast. I don't want like a slim fitting, which this kind of is, but, I, but this is super wash, so it's not gonna fit like this does. It is not gonna fit tight like this. It's gonna go and it's gonna shrink. So trust me, my shorts know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those things didn't even hardly fit. I, was, I had them on yesterday and I was like, why is my underwear poking out? They fit perfectly, perfectly, and now they're like two sizes too big I just it for the life of me I will never understand superwash it will never make sense to me so actually in a couple the next two episodes I don't have a plan for so not next episode unless I by some miracle finish this which isn't going to happen it is my only whip at the moment it's the only thing I'm doing right now um I'm probably going to start the other top once this is finished unless I get tired of this or I get stuck and I need to put it away for a couple days to think about it. Um, but this is pretty much all I'm doing all the time. Um, not next episode because I don't know what next episode's going to be. So eight, episode 80, what are we on? 84? So 85. But episode 86 is probably going to be about this. Maybe. If I'm close enough to being done. Where I will go over and tell you everything I did and stuff like that. Oh, what I wanted to show you too before we leave is because it's a dye project, I want to show you last week's dye project. This will not be the thumbnail because I don't want those poor people looking for pasty reviews to get stuck here. This is the Calypso Chalette that we uh, made out of 
This is Wool to Die 4's MCN High Twist 400 yards to 100 grams. This is what we have left. This is, I know I wrote it down. Seventeen point three two. Can you even see the color in there? It's purple, pink, and <laughs> cyan, <laughs> magenta, cyan, and purple. Ugh, my hair is just stuck in it. Um, I have named this ecstatic screams the colorway I have named ecstatic screams um, very excited this is done um, I did this two pattern 30 rows and then the end row and like I said it is wider than my wingspan but it's also very long it is past my crotch so if you are shorter or have a shorter torso be mindful that this gets very long, um, but I could see it was long as I was working it, so it wasn't like it just happened when I blocked it and went, oh, no. Um, yeah, Calypso Charlotte by Pink Mambo. So that's a June's Dye Project, all finished. I also did name this, um, I'm calling this Black Lipstick Stains. I just absolutely love the, it's like, it's what I wanted. It's exactly what I, like flex, it looks like someone took a faint brush and just went on it, which is what I wanted. And it's, look at the, can you see the tone, the tone difference in here, right here? I love it, oh, it's almost stripey, isn't it, almost. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do about that back. If you have any ideas on what to do about this back, please let me know. I was thinking, um, because I need to know where to put them, because I do them all the same, so I needed a way to put it in the middle like that. Do you think I should have done stock in that? Because the way this is, it, it holds them, it anchors them to the, to the top well. It anchors that you can sew right into that so it, it anchors them there well but I also didn't want to be like counting stitches to get to it especially stockinette's gonna roll so you're not gonna I don't know when it blocks out I don't think it'll even be an issue maybe mm, I don't know or we we could um, garter that part and just make those two points or those three points do you know what I mean so we'll garter everything else but make sure these are these three columns are knit stitches could do that too or just the two columns if we wanted I guess we could also do that I'm gonna see how, I think it's gonna block out that you're not even gonna see it um, but I'm, I can't think of it. It's just an easier way when you add on those stitches to start to start the, um, because you cast them on and then you just start ribbing. And that's a real easy way to do it. And I'm not sure I want to mess with how easy that is. I was considering doing the whole back like this for more support, but I don't think it's going to help. Um, anyway, it's the first iteration, so we don't know what's going to happen there at all, do we? I don't know. Okay. Oh, I also wanted to thank whoever bought from my shop the other day. Uh, your yarn has already been delivered, um, but uh, that was a nice surprise. So I don't know if you guys remember that I also sell yarn, but I do. Uh, you'll find the link to Morning Dew Studio below. Um, I do only do, um, I only have Halloween stuff up. Um, but if I'll, I'm open to um, other things, custom orders if you want. Um, if you'd like to 
have one of the die projects recreated for you too. I'll do that. Guys, did you watch Stranger Things? You watched it, right? Were you upset? I was devastated. I mean, I'm up I'm happy that my favorite character made it, but I didn't think The one we lost I didn't think was in danger. <laughs> and then when they were in danger, it was too late and I was like, "Oh, no." But I also think because we lost that one means my favorite is safe for the fin for the final season, I think, because I don't think there's a third party in there that I don't think they they would make that third party lose both of those people. They might. If they're sadists, they might. But I think that means my favorite character is safe. That's what I think that means. So if that's what that means, I, I'm okay with giving that person up, even though I was devastated at the time. It's like, oh no. Okay, I gotta clean up some cat stuff. I got kittens still that are weaned, that have been weaned since last week. And hopefully by the time I upload this on Friday, they'll be gone. But as of Wednesday afternoon, 3 o'clock, I have not heard when they're leaving. I would like them to be gone. Because I got to tell you, I don't have... The needs for kittens changes like immediately when they're weaned. Like, I have everything I need for bottle fed, but once they're weaned, they need room to run around, they need a bunch of litter boxes, they need toys to play with, they need room to run around, they need someone to play with them and socialize. I don't have time for any of that. I don't have the right food, because I have milk, <laughs> and they're on food. So, I'm, I'm not equipped once they're eating, they need to go somewhere else, because I'm not equipped to deal with them at that point. So, I love this rescue, love them. Usually they, you know, have the next foster before. That's what I really like because I'm very vocal about this is how old they are. This is when I'm planning to wean. This is when they should be weaned. This is when they'll need to be out. So I, I keep them up to date the whole time. And when I got them, I said, I'll have them for three weeks because they were three weeks old. And I said, Maybe they don't believe me that I know how old kittens are. Because I said, these kittens are three weeks old. I will have them for three weeks. Because at six weeks, kittens are weaned. Are weanable at six weeks. I probably tend to push them faster to get them out of my house. Um, but all of them weaned. All of them are, they've been on gruel for since Friday? Friday? Thursday, maybe? I don't remember. But it's been almost a week now and they're still here I would like them to leave I still haven't gotten a new dog still haven't gotten a new foster dog we were supposed to get a new foster dog no new foster dog so I don't know what's going on there anyway hope you loved Stranger Things now I don't even know they haven't even they haven't even filmed they haven't even written it they have not even written the last season oh my god I scratched myself I'm just redder in hell I'm sorry. I can't help it. Anyway, come back for a surprise episode next week. I don't know what it's going to be. It'll be fun. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> it'll be just like this, but it'll probably be 90 degrees. It's so nice today. It's raining and generally gray, and I love it. Okay, I'm getting out of here. I got stuff to do. I'm hungry. I want some noodle soup. Do noodles are my favorite thing to eat. What's your favorite thing to eat? Is it noodles? We got these noodles. I don't know what they're called or what the brand is, but they're in a yellow box. And they're partly made from beans. So I can pretend that they're healthy noodles so I can eat them for dinner. Anyway, I love doing the show because I'm in such a good mood after it, like just sitting here relaxing and talking about yarn. 
so relaxing. I hope you guys are taking good care of yourselves because the stories that have been pouring out since we talked last week about what happened, I feel like it that shall not be named happened. <laughs> but self-care is so important right now. Unplug when you need to and do whatever you need to do to make yourself feel safe. And remember that you are so important to this world and it doesn't matter what your gender is, what your sex is, what your sexual preference is, any of those things. It doesn't make you any less valuable as everyone else and we all deserve to be here. I feel really bad for some of the people I've been hearing about in the news that it's already hurting people. It also might be a good idea to go see uh, your doctor and see what, um, if you're worried, um, see what avenues are available to you. I am seeing um, a new doctor next month to see what is available to me. Um, so if you can't, I know it's kind of privileged because I have insurance and I can afford to see a doctor. I, I want to do that for myself. I, I want to see this doctor and see what my options are so I know how to navigate through whatever the future is. I think we're all kind of collectively seething until November <laughs> and then we'll see what happens and then hopefully we won't have to worry. It's also a good time to get involved with your local um, voting and polling and maybe um, if you feel inclined to um, volunteer at your local polling places and um, see if they need you. They might need you. We need good people. We need good people out there. Um, anyway, I hope oh, I'm still waiting for the hearings are next two, two weeks. Next week. What is today? No, it's in like six days, right? The 12th, they said. Yeah, next week we'll have a new hearing. Very excited. You know me, I love that. So we'll see. Okay, I'm getting the F out of here. So come back next week for some surprise episode. If you have a topic you would like me to cover, please drop it in the comments because otherwise I'm left to my own devices and who knows where that will lead us. I'm just saying we could talk about iced coffee and um, iced tea lattes if you want. I'm fully game for that. I will go over. <laughs> I will explain to you my favorite latte drinks. <laughs> it's almond milk. Vanilla almond milk. I don't do dairy. I've already told you that. Okay. Anyway, I'm, see, can, can you let me leave? I gotta go. Okay. So come back next week. Surprise episode. No idea what it's going to be. Hopefully it's not terrible, but I make no promises. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.